the wonders of organic germanium. In this film, I would like to introduce you to organic germanium, based on the book by Japanese researcher Dr. Kazuhiko Asai. The book itself was placed on the banned list years ago, and as far as I know, is still only available in German and English. Later, you will learn the reason for the ban and the new method that is now being used to solve the same problem. And this is in order not to endanger a very lucrative market share. In the 1970s, Dr. Asai was able to cure almost every known disease with an organic germanium solution, from nail fungus to encephalitis. It is very important to clarify that germanium is neither organic nor inorganic. It is an element included in Mendeleev's periodic table. By combining other elements with it, organic and inorganic compounds are formed. Inorganic germanium compounds are all toxic, while organic germanium is a trace element, like zinc or magnesium. All trace elements have one thing in common, that the body needs very little of it, but the little that is needed is unavoidable. Mendeleev included it in his table as Eka silicon, because at the time he only suspected the existence of this element. It was not until 17 years later, in 1886, that the German scientist Clemens Winkler discovered it and named it germanium out of respect for his native country. His discovery did not cause a big stir. It was just another proof of Mendeleev's theory. But with the development of the electronics industry, the semiconducting properties of the element were discovered. Semiconductors are materials that do not conduct electricity as well as metals, but also cannot be used as insulators. The most important property of semiconductors is their ability to donate and accept electrons. This property makes germanium suitable for making transistors and diodes, and has attracted Dr. Asai's interest in its biological applications. Who was Dr. Asai? He was born in Manchuria in 1907 and graduated from Tokyo Law School in 1932. He was then sent to Germany to study mining engineering. He was not able to return to Japan until after World War II. He then began research in mining and was put in charge of reviving Japan's coal mining industry. He was the first to detect germanium in a coal sample. Some types of coal contained quite high amounts of it. Dr. Asai theorized that it enters the coal from the body of the plant, not from the soil. Carbon is known to be extracted from the bodies of dead plants. To verify this, he began studying various plants and found that plants highly regarded in traditional Chinese medicine contained very high concentrations of germanium. Without need for completeness, here are the organic germanium contents of some of the better known plants. The unit of measurement, PPM, comes from the English parts per million meaning parts of a million. The connection became clear to Dr. Asai, and it took him only 10 years to produce it himself in his laboratory. In November 1967, he finally succeeded in synthesizing the first organic germanium, germanium carboxyethyl sesquioxide, or GE-132. Dr. Asai believes that all diseases are caused by a lack of oxygen. That is, if you go down the causal chain, you get to the point where there is too little oxygen for the cell to function properly. To understand how organic germanium works, we need to know some basic processes. The body obtains the energy it needs to function by burning food. This process releases carbon dioxide and hydrogen. The carbon dioxide is exhaled, and the hydrogen is converted to water by binding two oxygen atoms to each which is then excreted through the kidneys or as sweat. The normal functions of the body also produce oxygen compounds with many free chemical values, which are very unstable and toxic. These are not completely useless and harmful, as they are also used by the immune system to destroy pathogens. However, if too many are produced, they can attack the proteins and nucleic acids of our own cells, such as the DNA of the cell nucleus, and cause damage. In addition, extra oxygen is needed to neutralize these compounds with many free radicals. This shows that oxygen is needed in relatively many places, but unfortunately, a poor lifestyle and diet also requires additional oxygen, which our body has to get from other sources. 
It's like turning on more and more electrical appliances in a household. The more electricity is needed, the more the electricity meter turns. As long as the current is enough, there is no problem. But when the voltage drops, the light flickers, the refrigerator does not cool properly, and the washing machine does not run. When there is a lot of oxygen in the blood, its density decreases, which in turn lowers high blood pressure. So it gets to the cells in the capillaries and improves their oxygen supply. According to Dr. Asai, what are the causes of oxygen deficiency? One, acidosis. Acidosis caused by improper nutrition means that extra hydrogen ions circulate in the blood, which can only be removed by extra oxygen. Two, consumption of food with molecules that have many free chemical values. These molecules tend to bind to oxygen atoms, further reducing the number of oxygen atoms available. According to Dr. Asai, carcinogenic compounds and compounds high in free radicals are one and the same. Three, stress. According to Professor Hans Sale, constant stress causes the body to produce hormones, e.g. adrenaline, which also contribute to hyperacidity. His experiments on mice have shown that animals under constant stress quickly become ill and die. When Dr. Asai had finished the organic germanium solution, he was in serious trouble. He was suffering from such severe rheumatism that he practically had to be hospitalized. His doctors could not assure him that his condition would improve. Instead of waiting any longer, he tried organic germanium himself to see what it could do. There was only a slight improvement in the first few days of treatment, but he continued the treatment and was able to get up and take a short walk around the house on the 10th day. He had a therapist friend who lived nearby and used acupuncture from time to time to relieve his pain. He was the first outsider to see someone fully recover in a matter of weeks from a disease that modern medicine considers incurable. And he was the first to administer Dr. Asai's organic germanium solution to his own patients with great success. When word got out, official medicine took notice and banned it because it lacked the necessary permits. He was therefore forced to initiate the approval procedure. The first step was to determine whether organic germanium was toxic. Dr. Asai subjected the GE-132 compound he synthesized to the usual toxicology tests at an accredited institute, which showed that the organic germanium was completely harmless. To be on the safe side, Dr. Asai took his daily dose of up to 3 grams without any problems. Recent tests on mice show that a 70 kilogram human would have to ingest 238,000 milligrams of organic germanium to be considered toxic. That is 158 times the recommended maximum amount. Important, the inorganic germanium compounds used in the electronics industry must not be confused with the organic compounds as the former are highly toxic. Due to time constraints, I cannot tell you about Dr. Asai's experiments with plants and various animals, but in every case, the effect has been spectacular and very positive. Plants have become more resistant to extreme weather changes, and sick or injured animals have recovered in a flash. Let's take a look at how organic germanium works. As I said earlier, organic germanium is a semiconductor because it easily bonds with certain atoms. It has been pathologically proven that germanium binds to red blood cells, allowing the blood to carry more oxygen. Hydrogen atoms also tend to bond to germanium atoms, causing germanium to replace oxygen in these processes. This also produces free oxygen and improves the oxygen supply to cells. And in areas where there is a temporary anaerobic low oxygen environment, germanium can provide energy to the cells thanks to its high electrical potential. Interestingly, you can feel it. Many patients have reported to their doctor that they felt a strange, warm, tingling sensation in their body after taking the organic germanium solution. It is very interesting that the car starts immediately when you put a germanium solution into a completely discharged car battery. This fact is difficult to explain scientifically, but it is certainly due to the fact that the battery is charged by the electrical potential of the organic germanium. Experiments on mice and humans have shown that it increases the production of interferon, 
which protects against viruses and cancer. Germanium stimulates macrophages, whose job is to cleanse the body of cells that have no business being there. Bacteria, viruses, cancer cells. Macrophages can prevent the growth of cancerous tumors if they are present in sufficient numbers. I hope you have been able to follow me thus far, and I haven't been too boring, because we're going to get to the explanation of quantum physics now. Stay now to the end, because it is worth it. According to the definition of quantum physics, a human being is a collection of particles with a very small electrical potential. Death can also be defined as a body with no electrical potential. More and more medical instruments are based on the measurement of this tiny electrical potential, from which they can infer the correct or incorrect function of a particular organ. Each organ has its own normal electrical potential. If a different value is measured, it indicates that the organ in question is diseased. In quantum physics terms, if the electrical potential of an organ can be restored to the correct value, the organ will function normally. Cancer cells, for example, have been shown to have a high electrical potential. This could explain why they can multiply so quickly. And organic germanium binds electrons to itself, lowering the cancer cell's potential and returning it to normal. Here, organic germanium exhibits the same behavior that is typical of semiconductors, and that is very useful in the manufacture of transistors or diodes. Imagine being able to anesthetize with organic germanium. Pain is an electrical stimulus, a flow of electrons from the site of pain to the brain. The principle of anesthesia is to block the path of this electron flow. Of course, the pain is there. We just don't feel it. Organic germanium can also bind these electrons to itself. And this type of anesthesia has no side effects, even with prolonged use. This is also a complement to the medical use of semiconductors, because there are currently thousands of drugs on the market, none of which have semiconducting properties. And organic germanium has another very important property. Being semiconductive and non-metallic, it does not accumulate in the body, but is excreted within 20 to 30 hours. This is especially useful when it comes to eliminating the heavy metals that we have absorbed from our environment over decades. These substances, such as lead, mercury, and cadmium, are dangerous because they accumulate in the body over a long period of time in amounts that are toxic. Organic germanium binds the heavy metals, cleanses the blood, and helps restore proper chemistry. It then leaves the body with the pollutants attached to it. This is the greatest advantage over conventional medicines. It is excreted from the body without a trace and leaves no side effects. Dr. Asai has found that organic germanium is effective for a wide range of diseases, but especially for those so-called diseases of civilization, whether it is a disease of the cardiovascular system, the musculoskeletal system, or the nervous system, such as Parkinson's or Alzheimer's disease. The most amazing thing about it is that it has effortlessly brought relief in cases where drugs have had little effect. And that's not all. There are several theories about what makes us age. One of them is that it is caused by the production of so-called amyloids. These are abnormally altered insoluble protein chains that are deposited in the spaces between cells, especially in the heart and brain, and over time increasingly impair the proper functioning of organs. Studies in mice have shown that ingestion of organic germanium leads to significantly reduced amyloid formation. It is important to mention that Dr. Asai, who was a religious man, considered this element as a gift from God and never considered it as a medicine. He considered it as a tool given by the Creator to mankind to relieve our suffering and restore our health. From his point of view, organic germanium is the tool that activates the body's self-healing mechanisms to heal itself. In his book, he says that faith, the will to heal, is an essential prerequisite for successful healing. Dr. Asai emphasizes that a health-conscious lifestyle remains important. Organic germanium can only help if we take care of ourselves. After all this information, you are probably asking where you can get organic germanium. I have a good news and a bad news. The bad news 
is that the original GE-132 is only sold in Japan and by law cannot be imported into Europe. I have a friend who tried to import it twice and both times he was fined 1,500 pounds. GE-132 contains 42% germanium and is classified as a dietary supplement. On the internet, of course, you can find websites that sell organic germanium supplements. The only question surrounds the percentage of organic germanium they contain if they are not banned. I suspect that they pose no real threat to the revenues of the pharmaceutical lobby, since even 17% sanum germanium and 10% germanium lactocitrate are out of reach to ordinary mortals. However, the good news is there is a reliable source. My source of organic germanium is the Ganoderma, or red mushroom. This mushroom contains the highest amount of organic germanium on Earth. Of the two Ganoderma preparations available at DXN, the GL capsules, which are made from mycelium, the young filaments of the mushroom, contain four times as much as RG, which comes from the mature body of the mushroom. This source is safe, the quality is excellent, and I have experienced its effects on others and myself since 2011. I can vouch for that. In addition, the price can be lowered for any person at will if they do something about it. In Dr. Asai's book, it says that you can take 1 to 3 milligrams of organic germanium on average, depending on your diet. But the recommended dose is 20 to 1500 milligrams. And below 20 milligrams, no improvement can be expected. I have no official information on the number of milligrams of organic germanium that are contained in a GL capsule, for example but four to six capsules per day usually bring a noticeable improvement. If you want to do something for your own health and you don't live in Japan, you can leave me a message and I will help you.